I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about VIX, but more importantly, uh, VXX, uh, which I have traded off and on for a number of years, uh, some success, some failures, but I've got a couple things going right now pretty good. Uh, Don, didn't we have somebody from CBOE talk about VXX like four or five years ago? I, I, I believe we did. Okay. Well, that, that was, that kind of got me interested. And I think the guy's name was, was it Russell? Does that make sense? Russell Rhodes. I don't know. Tim, are you still here? He was on your show too once. He's... Yeah. Anyway, that doesn't matter. That, that's kind I think of it was Russell Rhodes. That, that, that sounds familiar. Was That's kind of what got me started. Um, but let's just uh, step in. I don't have a slides or anything. Uh, we'll just do what I can do on the screen here. Um, oops, wrong. Let's, let's look at VIX. Okay, and this is a... Let's see. A, all right. Everybody knows VIX. It's the 30-day volatility S&P. It's a calculated value. Uh, and it, well, this is the last uh, four or five years. And you can see it spikes and it always comes back down to some base level, spikes again, comes back down. Uh, we all lived through more or less last year's spike, come back down some more minor ones. But VIX is always seeking a, a fairly flat level, uh, just as the market kind of shakes out and things go back to normal. Uh, but there's no way to trade the VIX. You can't buy a, a share of VIX. Uh, you can buy options against it. Uh, it's kind of like SPX. It's an index. You can buy index on SPX. You can't buy a share of SPX. Uh, Russell, the same way. Uh, so to, let's look at VXX, which is, uh, it's actually a electronically traded fund. Barclays put this together, oh, 14, 15 years ago. And this you can buy shares of. And it kind of replicates the VIX, uh, but it doesn't. There's a, and I'll explain in a minute, but it's, it's any, it does it very inefficiently. Uh, and there are the, the mechanism used to create VXX creates losses as time goes along. Now, I think most of us, and now this is the first thing I look at every day is, uh, VIX Central. Okay. Uh, and this is the VIX futures term structure. And what they do is they use the futures, um, they plot the value of the futures every month, and they create this curve. And it kind of describes the volatility. Uh, if we look at the first month, this is on the June uh, contracts, uh, expires in 19 days. Uh, the next one expires 54 days. Every, every month there's a contract. Uh, and this is a normal, this is what called contango, contango. Uh, they get more expenses as you go out in time. But the problem with this is, this is, this first one is volatility uh, for 19 days. And this is volatility for 54 days. So it's really not 30 day volatility. So it's not a proxy for VIX. Um, VXX, uh, on the other hand, tries to more closely mimic VIX. Let me pull up a chart of that. For some reason, I got a box up here that's holding, there we go. Um, here's VXX. Okay. Um, I can't put a five year chart up. I'll explain that in a minute, but here's the last, uh, 
Well, this is five years. I can't go further back than that. Uh, but like VIX, it peaks, it comes back down, but it never finds a level of flat. Uh, it just continues down until an event causes it to spike up again. Then it continues down, continues down, 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 down. Then a spike, uh, we love that one. And then it's, from then on, it's been straight down. And the thing I like about VXX is that there's a built-in loss over time. Uh, and that's an edge. Uh, you, can, you can count on VXX going down over time. Why is that? Let me see if I can pull up that. I shouldn't have killed that VIX chart. Oh, by the way, well, never mind. Uh, as I said before, this is 19-day uh, volatility, 54-day volatility. VXX is 30-day volatility. How do they do that? They buy the contracts, uh, X number of these and Y numbers of these to equate to a 30-day expiration contract or value. And, and they do this every single day. Uh, so they constantly, and, and this, this ETF that is VXX, it's a pot of money that Barclay uses to trade these futures, uh, buying a ratio of the near term and the next term futures to simulate 30 day volatility. Now you can easily see if you're selling something at uh, 1860 and then buying something at 2065, which you have to do every day, you got to sell a few of these and buy a few of these, you incur a loss. Um, and that loss is the downward pressure, pressure on the VXX ETF. Uh, so that, at least that's how I understand it. Uh, let me put this to bed. Um, the VXX fund uh, trades those futures, but they issue stock that is based on the value of the fund. I guess that's how they initially funded the fund. So you're buying shares um, and those shares have options just like uh, VIX, but you don't have that. Uh, it's purely 30 days all the time. Okay. Now you look at my notes here. Over time, something can't keep decreasing until, I mean, someday it reaches zero. This doesn't because periodically when it gets to a certain point, I think it's around you know, $10 a share in that neighborhood, they do a reverse split, okay? So they take four of your shares and give you back one and they're worth four times as much. So they kind of pump up the, 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 the value of the individual's uh, stocks. Uh, so it's kind of the opposite of a regular split. Um, I've got a spreadsheet here. See if I can pop it up. Uh, the fund started uh, July 29th, 2009, and it had a lifespan of 10 years. During that time, it split a number of times. Each time uh, you gave four to get one back. Now, I kind of took this and worked backwards. If you had a share today, it's worth $34.16. This is a share of VIX. Now, if you back out that last split, uh, your share would be worth 136. And you back that all the way out through all six splits. And it turns out that today's share that is valued at $34.16 equals uh, $139,919.36 initially, back when the fund first started. So the fund lost that much money in that period of time. Uh, that's got to be a tradable edge. And uh, the simplest way to do it, let me pull up a spreadsheet here, is buy puts. And uh, these are the two trades I have on now. 
Uh, and, and this is not a, something you day trade, week trade. This is a trade you put on and you let ride forever. Uh, and uh, this trade I put on, uh, I rolled some, some stuff. So this trade was actually put on back in May uh, of 21. This one, uh, April 21, uh, you can see they're pretty good profit in them so far. Uh, something doesn't look right. Yeah, okay, that's right. So you just buy anytime you want to, you just buy at the money. That's the wrong trade. I'm sorry. There we go. Jeez, should have practiced this. Okay, uh, that makes more sense. Fix is now 34. Uh, back in June, I bought a VIX 20 puts and I paid $10.75 for them. They're now worth $13.20. Same thing here. Uh, now I, I buy out and I'll explain why in a minute, but you go out 18 months a year with these things. Um, and I'll explain that more in a minute. Uh, my second trade I've, I've put on uh, in May, it's already got $45, uh, $447 profit. Here's the percentage. I, I, I do everything by percentage. The first trade I put on in February is already done 22%. This trade I put on earlier this month, it's up 5.6%. And that's solely due to this constant decay of VXX. It's almost like getting a paycheck every week, every month. Um, the problem comes when you have this, okay? And it's gonna happen. You have these spikes. And when you do, uh, these trades are gonna hurt. That's why I put them on 18 months, a year out. Because if I'm in the trade, if I enter a trade here and this happens, I'll be okay if I can wait a year. Okay, now, a chance of me entering right here and getting the worst effect. This is the worst problem that's in the history of the thing, probably. Uh, I still would be okay a year later. Most of these smaller ones, uh, you know, same idea. As long as you can come into these things with six or nine months left in time, then you'll survive it. So the trick is to buy something 18 months, two years out, and roll it in nine months, 12 months, something like that. Uh, I don't have any set rules. I do tend to try to take my profits early. Um, let's see, let me look at my notes. Oh, I wanna talk about that reverse split just a minute. If we look at the uh, options chain on that, on VXX, um, you will notice that for each expiration, there's two different contracts, okay? And uh, like on June 4th, there's two of them. The 11th is not the case, and I'll explain why in a minute. 18th, what happens is when VXX did its reverse split. There was options outstanding. How do you deal with that? What they do is they issue a new, not, they start a new series. And instead of uh, being, each option represents 100 shares. Now each of your post split options are only good for 25 shares. So, so that's how they deal with the option split. It's kind of transparent. Um, the danger here is while you have both of these uh, styles trading, when you put on a new trade, you wanna make sure which one you're getting. You don't wanna do the 25, 100, you want to do the 100 because these, as they expire, won't be replaced. Okay, so just, just when you start playing options with VXX, be sure to be mindful of, of that little quirk. Um, that's the bulk of what I wanted to talk about is just the idea of, of buying those puts long-term, uh, you know, and you know, 
put your whole portfolio into it, but just put a chunk of money there, forget about it, let it ride. Uh, six months, nine months down the road, uh, you roll it, pocket a little bit of change. Uh, there are, I mean, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. There are other ways of trading this. You could, you could do anything you wanted to with these options. If you're a butterfly trader, a spread trader, iron condor, whatever, you can trade them just like a normal equity. Just bear in mind, you've got that built-in uh, price decay. And you should structure your trades to take advantage of that. Um, one trade that I'm working on right now, which has been kind of fun, is uh, a butterfly, or no, excuse me, a credit spread that I put on every week uh, to try to take advantage of that decay. And uh, actually, I put one on today. I put them on to expire. Uh, well, let's see, I got my rules stated down here. Uh, enter on Thursdays. Okay. Uh, 8 DTE, so you want the expiry, expiry next Friday. Uh, you, you start out with putting your short at 40 delta and your long at 15 delta. Um, and then you just kind of work with them and adjust them for uh, a decent credit. Uh, don't reach for big credit. Uh, the one I put on today, uh, I got 27 cents for. Uh, I did a 10 lot, so that's $256. What I do is I will adjust my trade size uh, to match my margin. I have it parked over here. I want to keep my, my at risk below $2,000. Okay. You can use the number you want. But that kind of sets up how many of these things you want to trade. Um, you can let them go to ex expiry if you want. Uh, you can... Uh, as a lot of people say, take your profits at 80%. Um, stop loss should be double your credit. Uh, I put this trade on. I restarted. I used to trade this a long time ago, but I started back again. First trade this year was uh, January 15th. And, oh, and uh, Don, if I'm not monitoring the chat box, So you'll tell me if there's any questions. Absolutely, no problem. Okay, at all. okay, good. Uh, anyway, I put this thing on every week. There's like a two-day overlap between them, um, and I've had one loser since the beginning of the year, and I got taken out by the two X credit stop. Turns out, if I'd have stuck with it, I would have made a profit with this, but that's a bad habit to get into. So I'll, I'll take the loss. I put this one on today for $256 credit. It's 27 cents per lot. I adjusted the number of lots to get my margin under 2000. Well, that would be $2,000. Uh, over here, I have at risk, which is the 2000 minus the credit. That's how I kind of keep the records. Um, just to summarize, after 16 trades, or well, 15 completed, I made a total of $1,750 on an average risk of $1,500. So that's 100% in five months, six months. Um, but I can see there's, there's the rules. Um, I think, well, I have, like I say, I've done this with, I've done butterfly, anything you can trade uh, I, I know I've done butterflies. I've done double calendars, calendars, uh, these credit spreads. Uh, I'm not sure I ever did an iron condor. But anyway, uh, whatever trade strategy you use and are comfortable with and you've got a set of rules that you follow and it's profitable should adapt to this. Uh, you know, and you can adjust how, where you set your trade based on the probability of VXX going down is more likely than going up. Okay. So uh, I think that's all I had, uh, Don. That's it. Okay. Well, there were a couple of, uh, that's uh, very nicely explained uh, to me, but let's ask others. Uh, by the way, Martin O'Shield uh, says, you are impressing this guy from Chicago. 
And uh, Gary Whitlock uh, asks, can you share your spreadsheet that, that has your trade log? And I don't know, I'm, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, are we running out of time? I, I can no, continue. Well, I, mean, time. I track all my shit trades doing this. And it's, it's nothing special in a spreadsheet. Uh, if you go to Think or Swim, go to the, uh, let's see. Your daily, you know, your trade log, your cash and sweep vehicle in Think or Swim. And here's the, uh, the, the trade I put on today. Okay, this is the 10 verticals. If you Click on that, do a control C, go back to Excel, and I'll just scroll down here. Let me, let me see where I was. And do a pay special text. Okay, and there it is. Okay. Um, one caveat on that is, let me go back to the thinkorswim, is you have to set up the columns in here of what you want. There are some columns in here that I didn't care about. Uh, so you, you can go through the process and set these things up so that uh, you don't have columns in here you, you don't care about carrying your spreadsheet. Uh, and this first column is always blank. It's got the date for the first day. That's just we're starting out. But when you copy it, you get a blank you get a blank cell there. So when you paste it back into your spreadsheet, just be sure you park yourself there first. And after that, it's just a, a matter of uh, I'm not back in the same. Yeah, um, this is just this column is just a sum of these. Um, this column is a, is a, my profit or loss. It's just the sum of these two. Uh, I do a percentage based on this versus my risk. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really nothing, nothing fancy. And you can certainly do that yourself and customize it however you want. And you can, you know, down here at the bottom, you can put summary stuff in here that gives you how your trades work. Does that answer the question? It does to me. Uh, anybody feel feel free to turn on uh, your mic and uh, ask some questions uh, or make some comments to Tom. And um, while we're waiting for some people to do that, let me ask um, Tom a question myself, if I may. Um, normally, hold on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, if you, uh, if we assume that, uh, uh, well, in a lot of options pricing, options are overpriced, and that's why we sell them. But here we're saying options are underpriced, or or is it a matter of the skill, the timing? Could it be that short term? Uh, put options on VXX are is overpriced, but long term, uh, nobody's buying that. You're the only one keeping the demand down and the price down. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Uh, in this particular case, I use a call credit spread because I just want to be, you know, above the market and I want a credit. Uh, if you put on a put debit spread, uh, you know, I don't know which one. It might outperform. I don't know. Uh, sure. You could certainly go either way with it. I just defaulted for some reason to the to the call credit spread. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of the puts too, the put purchase, but but the same thing. Oh, okay. The puts. Well, the puts is is uh, if you know the market's going down, you want to buy the puts. Now, could you short calls? Yes, but do you really want to do that? <laughs> you know, so I don't know. There's not really a call side way of playing that. 
Okay, uh, there's a few a few comments here uh, from Stephen Schneider. Have you considered shorting deep in the money calls to avoid the premium decay issues with puts? Well, you 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 certainly could. You would well short in the money calls. Uh, you certainly couldn't carry them to expiration. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have to think about that. I, I seems to, to me, me that it just might seemed, have a lot of risk to it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just this just seemed like the now. I, like I say, I've done calendars. I've done um, uh, a lot of different types of trades. Uh, even a butterfly you know, uh, where I put the butterfly uh, down quite a bit below the market and, and, and get a credit for it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think any trade that you do and are comfortable with could probably be adapted to trade the VXX if you took into account that long-term it's going to go down. And with the puts, I'm protected. The earlier strategy with just the long puts, I'm kind of semi protected against those periodic big spikes by being far enough out of the money that I can live through it. Now, if you're trading options uh, and one of those big spikes come along, uh, you got to have some really good risk management. In other words, run like hell. Um, but, you know, Nine times out of 10, 12 times out of 20. I don't know. It's it's going down. I can consistently make money on these uh, credit spreads. So oh, far. That's great. Uh, Mark Kantrowitz asks, does it scale 100% in five months? It's a very nice return, but uh, the 1750 isn't a lot of money, he says. Uh, well, yes. I mean, each one of these trades only takes me Two thousand dollars to put on, okay, um, and that's because of the difference between the strikes are are two. So that's well, it's two hundred, and then I multiply it by ten. That's two thousand. So yes, it does scale. You could put one of these on if you wanted to, and then your risk would only be two hundred dollars minus the credit received. So you can kind of pick up, you know, how much money do I want to put at risk for this strategy? Okay. And then just divide that by 200. Uh, and you know how many contracts. Now, I'm not consistent with, I, I, I play around with these and adjust them. And I might sometimes do two and a half wide, three wide. Um, and, and, I, and it's just by trial and error, I don't really have any methodology, methodology there. But in any case, you can control your risk by just how many of these things you put on and the spread width. So it's, it's, an, it's to answer his question, yes, it's completely scalable. Okay, and uh, Scott Hudson, or Hudson says, VXX options are heavily skewed to the downside because everybody knows VXX usually goes down. Absolutely correct. In fact, if you look at the options chain, this is kind of a quirk. Uh, you normally think of 50 Delta being at the money. VXX, it's not. That's not 50 Delta. But uh, I mean, you, you, I feel like all the things that make VXX weird, you can turn to your advantage. I really like the trade. Now, Tony uh, Chan asks, have you tried to buy long VXX, and not the options, but the underlying VXX, to catch a spike? Value may decay. No. I, I, one thing I've learned in my trading history is I cannot predict a market. <laughs> I'm terrible at it. And I wouldn't know a spike was coming until it hit me in the face. 
So, uh, no, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't attempt that. In yeah, fact, that's the reason I go with the long put so far out is I'm afraid one of those may come along and I want to take that into account and, and not get killed by it. Yeah, that's an elusive trade to try and catch the spikes. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the intent here, every trade I put on in VXX is directed at capitalizing on that slow inherent decay that's there day after day after day after day. Now, at the beginning, I showed that chart at VIX Central. If you come in here and it's not in contango, in other words, the first month is higher than the second month, then I would sit in the sidelines because things are getting kind of weird. But that's about the only time I really, you know, take a market stance. Anybody else uh, have any? Uh... Oh, here's another one. Let me just see if I can figure this one out. Mm. From Steven Schneider. With spikes being as abrupt and steep as they can be, is it really realistic to assume you'll be able to get out with a stop loss at one times the premium on short strikes? Should there be a deep enough explosion in the VIX? Hey, I'm, I'm sure it could happen. Uh, I mean, I use a, a, a two times credit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought I had one happening last week and, and you know, I bailed out. Uh, but yeah, you, you will, uh, there'll be periods of times where, but I mean, you're limited in loss. You can't lose more than the 1700 or $1,800. That's the max you can lose. And over time, the winners will overcome that. You know, you'll make that back. Now, if I got killed by a spike, I'd think twice before I put our trade on the next week. <laughs> you know, it's maybe it's time to sit back and let's watch the market a little bit. And when things calm down, jump back in and, and, and uh, resume the game. Uh, but you, you are limited in loss. You can't lose more than what you, you set as your max loss. And like I say, it doesn't take a lot of trades to make that up. Assuming it works, uh, it would be a very nice trade for an IRA or for somebody uh, in, a, in, in a in a small account. I'm actually and, trading. No, I'm not trading this in my IRA. I'm trading, yeah. But yeah, it would be. Uh, okay. I don't, Gary Whitlock says, for your long put trades on VXX, do you try to, t do you attempt to time the entry? Wait till the volatility begins to fall after a run up. Uh, if I was entering a trade, I'd look at that. Yeah. I'm really never entering a trade now. I'm just rolling. And uh, so if a spike comes along, I just wait it out, hopefully. Uh, so I, I, you know, I don't really try to time entries. I just uh, try to protect myself from having to get out when the spike occurs. Great. Um, okay. I don't, oh, here's another one. Uh, okay. No, he just says thanks. Uh, so uh, who else has another question? Otherwise... Well, well, just just note that the spikes are of limited time duration. You don't have to wait long for the spike to decay, some or all. Yeah, exactly, and, and that's why I make sure I have a trade on long enough. Now, when it when I have a eighteen month trade on or two year trade, uh, I'm looking to get out of it uh, somewhere between six and nine months to expiration. That way. I won't be surprised by something and don't have enough time to wait it out. Well, it could just be that there's some inefficiencies uh, in the pricing and that you're discovered some, which I know you're, you're very good at, at, at finding trades that actually work as opposed to supposedly work. Well, what surprises me is that uh, this, uh, 
it's got to be known to everybody that VXX is a decaying, decaying instrument. So that has to be priced into things. But I, I yeah. can still make money. Well, one thing, one possibility that occurs to me is that market makers could be spreading. They have to sell short term uh, puts, let's say. Uh, I mean, yeah, they have to sell them. They have to have people buy them. Uh, but they don't have to sell many long term puts. Uh, so it could be that they hedge one against the other, that they spread one against the other. As a matter that, of fact, I, I bet that's the case. That brings up a good point that I, have, I should mention. Uh, when you go to put these things on initially uh, and you're, you know, you're buying puts 18 months, two years out, there's not a lot of liquidity. <laughs> you're exactly a good word. I mean, you know, you, you look at the spread and you say, Ugh. but I mean, you got to pay the price. Go ahead and enter it. Don't try to, uh, you know, that's, that's, and maybe that's the cost of everybody knowing it's going down, but yeah, it, I've never put one of these on that. I like my purchase. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to pay up, but exactly. You, exactly. You I use mean, a limit order or uh, no, I just, I, I go in and just work it. Uh -huh. you know, I, I'll put it in a little bit below the mark. And if that don't work, I adjust it and sooner or later it'll get filled. Okay. Martin comes back. Oh, hang on. Let me do them in order. Um, Rocco asks, would you consider using calendars, uh, single or double, to benefit from volatility spikes? Hmm. I guess you could. Uh, I am a terrible calendar trader. I don't I I don't get it. So <laughs> uh, it's, it's I, not I, I, an easy trade. That's no, I, I have I, I have tried several times and, and every time I give up and says, well, well, you know, why kill myself over this? I know it's a good trade. It, it can be profitable. But I just can't make it work. But if you are a good calendar trader, uh, I see no reason why you couldn't adapt those skills to the VXX. Okay, I, I did a I did a uh, a calendar a year ago, and it worked out real good. But you got I, it was an extremely long uh, DTE. I, I remember that much of it, and it, it actually made money on it. Reasonable, it, a fairly good amount of money. But it was, uh, I don't totally understand why it works. So I just says, nah, I'm not going to do that anymore. Okay, Martin O'Shield says it's a very impressive presentation. Thank you again. Is what you're doing essentially uh, just doing, uh, is selling a vertical call VXX option spread ranging from eight days to eight months? No, it's just eight days. Okay. Uh, I got put on a trade uh, this afternoon that expires next Friday. Now I'll put on a trade next Thursday. It'll expire the following Friday. So there is like a one day overlap or two day overlap. That's just the way I, well, I do it. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting. That's again, you're, let me see. Yeah. You're selling short term and buying long term in a way in different strategies. Uh, which might represent inefficiencies in the market at those uh, time periods. Gary Whitlock asked, ha asks, have you tried UVXY? No, I haven't. Yeah, well, Stephen Schneider says bid ask spreads are, are poor on UVXY. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a, there's a lot of different uh, instruments out there for trading volatility and uh, VXX has got to be the most liquid. Absolutely, uh, and, and we've seen that some of those a smaller one, so can go under. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, I, but again, if you are trading those other things and you have a understanding of how they work, I'm sure this could be adapted to it. Uh, it's just not what I would do with, with my knowledge of those. Martin O'Shield asks, uh, do you have a website or offering 
Uh, are you are you offering anything through Arimer? Also, he well, let me ask that one first. No, no, I'm just a local yokel here in North Carolina that belongs to the meetup group. Uh, in fact, I live in Gibsonville, which is between Greensboro and uh, Burlington. And when we were doing these live things, I attended the meetings there to the library. So I'm, I'm not uh, just a local. Oh, don't uh, underestimate yourself. Uh, also, uh, Martin O'Shea points out, also UVXY, the brokerage firms, uh, such as IB, require uh, crazy margins uh, just to trade products such as UVXY, which is true. Uh, Steven Schneider says, thank you for the thoughtful presentation. Uh, let's cut off, well, uh, uh, Gary Whitlock says, thanks, Tom. Okay. Uh, let's cut off the questions and let Tom make any uh, final other remarks. Well, I, 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 uh, if tomorrow or next week you think of something that you want to ask, uh, I love keeping in ton contact with, with different traders. I've got several people that I am mean, not a mentor or anything, but I have a lot of people that we talk trades back and forth and help each other out. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a member of the meetup group. You can contact me through that. Uh, uh, I hesitate. I see we, this is being recorded and will end up on YouTube. Oh, yes. Okay. So I don't want to give out my email address and phone number, but we'll put it on the, uh, the meetup group somewhere, Don, if you would. Yeah, sure. Um, and then feel free. You can call also or stop email the recording, or... and then you can give it if you want to. Well, okay, do that. Fine, if you want to pause. Uh, let me see. Is there anything else we want to do in the recording? Uh, well, let me stop it. Okay. Uh...